To introduce Dr. Love. I am Barbara. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Yay. <laughs> okay, so who am I? Why am I on this journey? Who are you? Why are you here? What can we all learn from each other? Uh, my family name is Love, and I didn't feel any love from the Love family. <laughs> so I left home at 16 to find love. And I ended up in New York and I found all these people who adopted me. They just took me in and they took care of me and they fed me and they took me around and introduced me to all their friends. It was a process of self-discovery for me. And so when I went to acupuncture school, I thought Chinese medicine was the be all and end all. My very first patient uh, after I finished acupuncture school, I'm doing house calls because I can't even afford an office, I put the needles in, she bursts into tears. So I think, oh, I did something wrong. So I take out all the needles, and I start rocking her, and then I hear this story about her mother blaming her for the father leaving, and so therefore, when she grows up, she's only attracted to older men who then abandon her. <laughs> so I'm like, gee, I better go back to school. Because <laughs> acupuncture did not prepare me for this. So then later, I ended up learning Tibetan psychiatry. Then I finish that, I go back to Chinatown, New York, and then I meet my Qigong master, who then introduces me to Taoism. Then I end up in Chinatown, and I go into a jewelry store where the owner is Egyptian. So now I'm getting the whole Egyptian flavor. So now I've got Tibetan, Taoist, Buddhist, Chinese medicine, ancient Egyptian, all bouncing around in my head. Then I meet my spiritual teacher who says, just sit with it. There is no right, there is no wrong, there is no good, there is no bad. There's just simply what is. And he said, whatever works for this person, you use it. And whatever works for that person, you use it. So I was looking for the unified field theory that could explain everything in the universe. Uh, it doesn't work. It's just what works for this person now that's in front of you. So I went from massage therapy thinking that was it, to acupuncture thinking that was it, to herbal medicine thinking that was it, to macrobiotics thinking that was it, and then thinking a shaman, that's got to be the ultimate in a shaman, yeah. And then shamanism is a way of going through a doorway that you can't see into an alternate dimension and bringing back information that is unexplainable. So here we have, you know, my rational Western upbringing, college degree, family, Western medicine, and then over here we've got this whole other energy of ancestral energy that through shamanism is now triggered back four million years. Okay, so you're connected to your mother, to her mother, to her mother, to her mother, to her mother, back four million years. So we actually have a library inside of us, but it's too much information to carry, so we just, we just go to sleep on it. We just shut it down, oh, I can't remember, it's too much. So that's what we call being asleep. And then when we meet the person who is enlightened, that's what we call being awake. Now, all of us are awake at certain points of the day. 2.15, 4.23, 6.19, we're awake. But the other 23 hours and 22 minutes, we're done. <laughs> so several philosophers have called it the automaton, the robotic mentality, uh, automatic thinking, and not being connection with the heart and being separated from source. So as I began to study and read all the different cultures, everyone had a different way of explaining it, but they were all really saying 
the same thing. It's about separation. So we have this need to believe in magical things. So I began to realize that we are the magical being that we want to believe in. Okay? So it's really fascinating that we have this ability to shine a light that's so bright that we can enlighten other people. And we know that's true because we've seen other people do it and we're like, yeah, I want to be like them instead of being like myself. I too can be that person. So my objective is health. I had two uncles die of heart attacks before they were 50. I had one cousin die of uterine cancer and another cousin die of ovarian cancer before they were 50. That disturbed me. This is my own family. So my motivation is to help my family. So the Love family should be able to help with love. But love was not enough. And that was the biggest breakthrough for me. Love is not enough. You have to have some skills in communication, okay? Now, what if you went to Germany, all right? And you didn't speak German. Would you be able to understand them? Would they be able to understand you? Yes. So even though you don't speak German, you would find a way to communicate non-verbally. Now, through testing, we find out that 80% of all communication is nonverbal. And we think we need the words. Well, words are important. Words are really important. But if you are integrous, if you are integrity with body, mind, heart, mind, spirit, mind, then the heart will communicate directly without words. What do you think about that? So, our purpose is to love and be loved in return. Yes, anybody disagree with that? Okay, so if that is our whole purpose, do you wanna make that into a tragedy? A dramedy? Or do you wanna make it a joyous communication, a celebration? What do you want for yourself? I already know what you want. You wanna drum and dance, <laughs> right? I was just thinking that, you read my mind. <laughs> So, if, if life is full of pain and suffering and misery, then my only choice is peace and joy and happiness and celebration. <laughs> That's my choice. You know, the flood is going to come. The hurricane, the earthquake, the economy, <laughs> the war. I mean, all that, uh, you have no control over any of that. So, the only thing you do have control over is this. Open your heart, close your heart. Open your heart. Now, who remembers the movie Groundhog Day? <laughs> One of my favorite movies. Did you see that movie? Did you see that movie? Okay. So, over and over and over again. Right. I've watched it at least 16 times. Okay. So, he messed up. He stole. He lied. He cheated. He did all the wrong things. And then he turned the corner. And then... He learned how to ice sculpt and play the piano and read poetry and help ladies across the street and, you know, donate money to the poor. And he went from this scoundrel to this angel. And then and only then did life move forward for him. And he got the girl. And he got the girl. <laughs> okay. True love. Okay. So, where does true love start? With you. Starts inside. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because when you love you, you become a magnet for everybody to love you. So when I see people looking at me funny, guess what I do? I walk right up to them and I say, hi, how are you? I'm going to give you up. And they're like, oh, okay. You see me do that, right? Anybody yeah. looks at me weird, I go right up to them. Because I'm going to balance out that energy. I'm going to open my heart. And there's not going to be anything in my way. So that is the whole reason that I'm teaching this course. 
okay? So now you have my raison d'etre. So somebody comes in front of me, and they're <laughs> blame, guilt, shame, that. And then I'm like, okay, what did I do to magnetize this? I must have done something, otherwise it wouldn't be in my face. So let me open. Okay, I'm listening. You have my attention. What is it that you need to express? And then the more they are, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> They don't have anyone to fight with. Exactly, because I don't feed it. I just accept it. And once I accept it, then they run out of gas. Ah, well, maybe, maybe I, maybe I did it the wrong way. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to come off like that. And how many people are flexible and loose and just go with the flow and make the adjustments so that everything works. So our objective is to find, is to find the happiness within. Please okay. come in. And when you find the happiness within, then love walks in the door every time. Mm -hmm. <laughs>